Hey, welcome to RV Woodworks. My name is Raheem, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I finished building this miter station. Now, this is a part two or final part of a two part series. And if you missed the first one, I'll leave the link in the video description below. Now, if you think you can't build good looking furniture with two by fours, well, here's proof of that. And our friend Scott has a video explaining just that. His video really influenced me to build this miter station using two by fours. Be sure to check out the link below to his video and to his channel. He's got some great content. Now, without further ado, let's roll that intro and let's get started. Here is where we left off in the last video. With the frame complete, we can concentrate on adding drawers and the laminate top in this video. Having left the project for a week, we start today by realizing that the frames are no longer square. A great trick to measure if a project is square is by measuring diagonally, corner to corner, and both should result in the same measurement. Which was the case with this frame last week, but the wood has acclimated more to the environment. One side gave in a half an inch and the other increased by a half an inch, resulting in an inch difference between the two. I'm sure I had something intelligent to say, but guess who forgot to turn the mic on? Anyhow, the gist of what I was trying to explain was that this is a common problem and there is a solution. Ratchet clamps are the ideal tool used to squeeze in the corner to corner causing the wood to return back to square. Since I didn't have a pair handy, I improvised and used F clamps instead. Again, added it to the corner that gained a half an inch, thus forcing the workpiece to return back to square temporarily while I installed the panels, which kept it square permanently. Measuring once again, we can see that it's 52.5 inches on both corners, thus the workpiece is back squared again. On a side note, what was I thinking working without shoes on? Shame on me. Please do as I say, not as I do. With that minor hiccup out of the way, let's get back to the build. To install these side panels, I chose to use pocket screws with two and a half inch screws going into the frame. Honestly, it is so satisfying when a piece fits in like a glove. I guess you would have never known about the wood movement if I hadn't told you, but that's just the kind of guy I am. Well, enough trying to make myself look good. Let's get these panels installed. Here's a question every woodworking YouTuber asks him or herself. Should I move the camera or should I lift this heavy workpiece so I don't mess up the shot? I decided on the latter and started to install the other panel. Now with two pocket screws at each corner of the middle panel, which by the way means eight screws, I got the middle partition installed dead smack in the middle of the frame. With that complete, it was time for a marathon on the table saw to get all the pieces cut for the 16 drawers. And to be clear, there are five sides to a drawer and just considering the final cuts, I had 80 pieces to prepare. Now this is shop furniture, but I want this to last. So I used three quarter inch maple plywood for the front, back, and the sides, and used a half an inch of plywood for the base. Also pro tip, every woodworker will tell you that consistency and repeatability is key to getting professional results. Therefore, when you have your fence dialed in to the right distance, cut all the pieces at once. Don't change the fence unless you're done. Now there's a bunch of ways to make drawers, but I kept the pocket screw tradition on this project going. 120 screws or pocket holes to be exact. Next, we make the drawers. All right guys, I have all the pieces cut for the drawers. I created one drawer as a test to make sure that I had the measurements correct and um, they're just as, I me just as I measured the exterior wall. The one thing that I will tell you, and this is something that 
always seems to get me, but I've never learned from it, is that three quarter inch plywood is not really three quarter inch plywood. And if you add up both the one sixteenth on each side, there's a one eighth difference. And that was causing the, the door to be slightly smaller than it needed to be to fit well. If you can see, I've added um, some washers here before screwing on one of the sides. That's helped fix it. But with that said, I use this as the new measurement to create all the rest of the pieces required to make the remaining 15 drawers. I'm gonna make one slowly and then we'll cut to a montage and uh, you'll get to see me make the remainder 14 drawers that's left. So what I've done here is I've created a right angle on two sides and the width here is the exact width of the drawer. Now, the reason I've done this is that it always helps me create the boxes in square and whenever you wanna do anything repeatable, having a jig always helps. So I pick up two sides, one goes here, one goes here, and then the one with the pocket holes goes on the outside. Now you're not going to see these pocket screws because there's going to be a false front and on the back side it obviously in the back of the drawer anyway so you won't really see the pocket screws, but I will tell you that uh, the other reason why you keep the pocket screws on this side is because you want the screw to go into the wood, to the middle of the wood, instead of it coming out this way, which it won't be able to grab as much of the wood there. So let's get started. Let's use these handy dandy pocket screw clamps. Now I already know this is square because I've measured this multiple times. All I'm going to do is start screwing it in. Did you hear my daughter in the background? Stick around, she might make a visit later. So I'm pretty much done installing door slides, but I wanted to give you guys a quick overview on how I install door slides. So what I do, I take a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Obviously this is based on the measurements that you're going to have. I put a three quarter inch plywood down, and then I take a half an inch of plywood, and I put that down. Having it rest on this gives me a even surface, straight surface, and exact measurements all the way up. I do this exactly the same way all the way up. Put this in, install the door slides. Then I take away the half inch. And this gives me a constant three quarter inch all the way up. And I don't like my door slides being completely all the way down. It gives me a little bit of gap. Then take out the slides. Just a moment here. Make sure it's resting on the three quarter inch plywood. Bring the ends out. Now you want to be about two millimeters inside. Line that up and then put the screws in. Here is an important one. A lot of people do this and they miss this step. Make sure the back is pressed down as you pull out. You see how my bottom drawer came out with it? That's fine, it's good. It gives you a flat surface all the way across. As this comes out, the next hole will get exposed. And as you drill this back, put a little bit of pressure in the back to make sure that it's level. It will lift up sometimes. The second screws. Not a massive amount of pressure, just enough to know that it is laying on that plywood underneath. Once you have those two in, you can release 
this. I would go ahead and put in the last two screws. As I'm sure you can tell, this video is slightly out of order, but thanks to editing, I can keep the flow going. After installing 8 drawers, I took a break to install the middle platform that the miter saw will rest on. Measuring the height of the table saw, the top which is a 3 quarter inch MDF, and the frame which is 3 inches, I calculated that these braces need to be 7 and 9 sixteenths of an inch below the surface of the table. With that calculated, I glued and screwed the braces. Next, I cut the top to size. Now I don't own a fancy track saw yet, but it's definitely on the list. I use my circular saw with a straight edge to get the same result. But man, that MDF is a horrible material to cut. That dust goes everywhere. By the way, did you see the drum fan that I pulled closer to the workpiece as I was cutting the board? In a future video, I'll build something better. But for now, this acts like an exhaust and pulls all the dust in the air as I run the circular saw. And it's attached to a 4 inch Merv 11 filter. Really helps keep the air clean as I usually have it running in the background while I'm working. Once I got it cut to size, I added a hardwood trim that gives it a nice clean look and a significant amount of strength. I cut the trim on my miter saw with each corner cut at 45 degrees. For installation, a lot of people use brad nailers, which does make the job a little bit easier, but I wasn't planning on painting this piece. So I just used glue and clamped it with painter's tape as well as some clamps. And you'll see that shortly. With the glue dry, I worked on the data required for the T-Track. I used my trim router with an undersized 3 4 inch straight bit and made multiple passes, each time lowering the depth until I got the T-Track to fit in the slot. It was here I realized I need a new router. I just placed an order and I can't wait to show it to you in my next build. That T-Track just needed a little persuasion. I have just the thing for it. For some added flair to the tops, I decided on a Formica finish. It looks great, provides surface that will last for years, and best of all, glue can't stick to it. And yes, it's color matched to the frame. Now cutting Formica is easy. It's as simple as setting up a straight edge and taking multiple passes with a scoring knife or even a utility knife, which is what I'm using. Just remember that you don't have to put the weight of the world down, just multiple light passes is all you need. You aren't actually cutting it, rather just scoring it. That is so satisfying. Anyhow, to install Formica, I use contact cement. This stuff smells horrible and worse to breathe. I opened all the windows and waited till my family went to sleep so there was no chance anyone started inhaling this stuff. Installation for contact cement is actually quite simple. It's not like other glues as it doesn't have a setup time, rather it bonds to itself. Just apply using a foam roller and let it sit for 15 minutes. Once it's dry, Use some sticks between the formica and the surface because once it touches, the bond is almost instant. Then remove a stick at a time and use a roller 
to even out the formica on the surface. Here's a tip for you. Start in the middle and work your way outward one direction, then come back with the other. This will help remove the air bubbles. Also, I like to put weight on it for a few hours to ensure the bond is permanent. Oh, and I almost forgot. When measuring the formica, don't be stingy. Leave a little extra just in case if you make a mistake. And then come back with a flush trim bit and clean up the edges. Once that's completed, use a 45 degree chamfer bit and add a nice edge to the top. Well, that's what I did. Take a look. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. I want to say a special thanks to you for sticking around and I really hope you learned something new. Now then, let's finish up these drawers. Once I had the faces measured, I used a 1 8 inch block to space out the drawer faces and screwed them in the back. I was a bit fancy here and made all the drawer fronts with the same piece of plywood. I think that continuous grain looks amazing. Let's take a look at one so that you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. You see those stacks of cards? They are exactly 1 8 of an inch. Placing those on the bottom and on the side, I can ensure the spacing is exact. Once I have it all set, I use these little clamps to hold the drawer and simply screw it in from the back. Last but certainly not the least, all that was left to do was to install the door hardware. I used a Craig jig to install the door handles. If you would like a tutorial on how to do that, or if you don't have a Craig jig and still would like to be able to find the center of a drawer, leave me a comment below and I'll put out a special video showing you how I do this. But with that, this project was complete. And oh yes, didn't I promise a special guest? Here they are. These are my two little ones. Well, they're not so little anymore, but please allow me to introduce my son and my daughter. They were so excited to peel off the painter's tape that I used to mark the center of the faces. Well, with that, I can call this project complete. Oh, hey. I really like how this miter station turned out. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And maybe if you think I deserved it, would really appreciate it if you give a like to the channel and even subscribe. Also, you might have noticed, I didn't really talk about finishing the drawers. Well, there's a reason for that. I wanted to ask you, should I leave the plywood exposed or should I chamfer the edges like I did the top? Or do you think I should add veneer? Put your comment and let me know based on your feedback I'll put out a video doing just that. This way, you have a say in what the shop looks like too. Anyhow, thanks for sticking around till the end. Really hope you enjoyed it. Did I inf inspire you to build something? I sure hope I did. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. See you in the next one.